Well, good morning. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while or following me on social media, you will know that one of my passions and obsessions is skincare. It's something that I've always really enjoyed learning about and doing for my own skin. I started my skincare routine when I was about 15 years old and I've managed to keep it going till now and I'm now almost 34 and I think that has really helped me put my skin in good stead and given me the best skin that I can possibly have. Now on that note, I'm always looking for new ways to help my skin. And I always like to try out new gadgets, new creams and things like that. But I wanted to share with you something that I discovered a few months ago that has been life-changing. Now this is the Luna 4 from the Swedish brand Foreo. And what this is, it is a facial cleansing and massage tool. And I got this, as I said, a few months ago. I've been using it every single day and it has changed my life and my skin. So I had to share it with you today. So before we go any further, I want to tell you how this works. So when you buy the Luna 4 device, you download the app onto your phone as well. I'm just gonna see if you can see that. And then you can go through guided cleansing and massages. So you can actually turn on the device from your phone, but you can also turn it on on the back here. So you just press the button and then it comes on and it starts to work. So I've been using this for a few months and the only way that I can really explain is that it would be like not brushing your teeth with an electric toothbrush. I think that's the best way for me to describe this. Yes, you can cleanse, but when you cleanse with this, game changing. I remember a few weeks ago I was away and I forgot to pack my Luna 4. I didn't feel like I was getting a proper cleanse. So that is the difference. It is a game changer and I love it. So I'm going to do a little cleanse to show you. I'm just going to take a washcloth and just dampen this and just dampen my face with the washcloth. And then I'm going to use the Foreo Luna Micro Cleanser. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this onto my hands. I'm going to rub it into my skin, all over, it doesn't have to be precise, just get it everywhere. And then I'm just going to, again, put a little bit of water on, just to give it a bit of a, spread it around. Now what I'm going to do is just wet the device quickly. And then I'm going to start the program on my phone. Yes, this is using T-Sonic pulsations to really get into the skin and give it a proper cleanse. These bristles are so soft, but they cleanse the skin properly. Now, for amazing skincare, you need to set the foundations of your routine and I think one of the most important foundations is cleansing. If you're not cleansing your skin properly, it's never gonna be that glowing, beautiful skin that you are looking for. It's kind of like if you try to paint walls or furniture without prepping them first, you're not gonna get as good result. So I like to take the time to cleanse properly and really set a great foundation for my skin. Just do this for two minutes. You don't need any longer than that. It feels great. And I haven't got anything on my skin at the minute. It's morning. But I just like to give it a proper cleanse after sleeping. And then I'll do it again at night as well. Now I think I'm done, so you just need to rinse this under the tap and let it dry off and then I'm just going to clear my face with my washcloth again. And that is it. Beautiful cleansed skin. And you can see that once you have finished, you do get a really gorgeous glow. And the skin 
and the face is woken up. It feels fresh and clean. Now, as well as this cleansing side here, we also have the massaging side on the back. And you can take your phone on the app and it will guide you through the various options that you can use. There is a little contouring routine that you can do. There's one for the eyes, one for lymphatic drainage. They're all on the app and it will guide you through each process. So I think you can agree this is a pretty cool little tool. Now, if you would like to try the Luna 4 by Foreo for yourselves, I am delighted to let you know that I do have a special discount for you. Now I have to tell you that this product is hardly ever on discount, so we're really, really lucky to have this chance. So the first 100 people to watch this video and click the link in the description box will get 35% off the Luna 4. And that is an amazing, amazing discount and it really is a great product. So yes, the first 100 to click the link in the description box below will get 35% off. And I would say run, don't walk, because this is amazing. So welcome to Prestonfield House. This is a country house hotel, just about 15 minute drive from my home in Edinburgh. You can see there that mountain is Arthur's Seat, so it's very close to the centre of Edinburgh. But this is a little gem in the city, and the most wonderful thing is that they have the very best Christmas decorations, I think, in the whole of Edinburgh. I mean, it's not what I would do in my own house, because there's a lot of red and it's really really over the top but absolutely in the very best way it is magical and you really get the sense of the festive season when you come here so it's always something that I like to do around this time of year just before December is come to Preston Field admire all of the decorations and really get in the mood for Christmas so I thought that it would be nice for me to walk you in and show you around because it's there's a lot to see I will just say that it's quite busy here today. They have an event with 450 people here. That's why we've got this marquee. So I'm going to show you around. I might have to be quiet. In my last video, when I toured Grey Walls, people asked why I was whispering. And the reason is because people were there enjoying afternoon tea and lunch. And I just like to be a little bit respectful and not disturb everyone. So if I whisper, that is the reason. But let me see if I can take you around. First off, I just think the outside is gorgeous. Look at all of these beautiful, real uh, Christmas foliage outside. And then I just love the huge log baskets and bay trees. So let's go in. Gorgeous. The entrance is pretty magical. You have all of these polo playing tools. Oh, I think that's croquet, actually. Yeah, croquet. <laughs> but isn't it just gorgeous? It feels like going to like a royal country house. And then you walk in, and you've got this magical entrance, which I just absolutely love. And what I will tell you about Preston Field is that they light all of the fires. It's so warm and cozy. It's like a big warm hug when you come in here. And one of the things that I really like is all of the lamplight, which makes it even more cozy. So here we have a dining room and the first Christmas tree. You can see that this is being set up for a dinner. And this is an incredibly well laid out, ta light laid out table. Just look at all the glassware on here. That's a lot of wine. But yeah, I just really love that they have real fireplaces, beautiful lamplight. It's a very special, unique place. And then in the opposite room, it's kind of like a little tea salon. I'm not going to go in because people are enjoying themselves, but I will just give you a quick glimpse. Just going to take you upstairs. I'll just turn around and show you the view here. And then we will go upstairs to have a look at the decorations from up here. Because up 
in here is a huge drawing room. And they have the most magnificent fireplace. I'm sure it's going to be very busy. But isn't it just magical? Everywhere you turn, there's something new to see. And in here, another incredible dining room with a gorgeous tree. And again, the table is very well laid out for, I think, they're having dinner here later on. These walls are actually fabric, which I love. It makes the room feel even more cosy. Very beautiful. And we'll just go through here. This is a very special room. You can see here, it is a gorgeous winter's day. The light is heavenly. And this kind of reminds me of being in, like, Windsor Castle. <laughs> in the private apartments. It's just so royal in here. I love it. People have been having afternoon tea. And then in here is a private little sitting room. I have had tea in here before. I did my Q&A here uh, at the beginning of January, actually, this year. And this is a great room to come into and just sit with friends and really have an intimate, beautiful lunch or tea. And look, the fires are burning in every single room. It's so magical. I'm just trying to get every detail in so that you can see another wonderful Christmas tree. Let's go and have a look at the decorations on here. We've got... Uh, macarons and little teapots it's really very beautiful here we've got a picture of the new king and opposite we have a picture of the queen which I love this is probably my favourite room at Prestonfield because it is like having your own little private sitting room in a palace. And it's a very beautifully well laid room. We have lamps, rugs, textiles, cushions and then those fireplaces just make it extra special. Just go back through here. And the flowers, Preston Field, are all real. Some gorgeous lilies. If you're ever in Scotland, you have to come here. It's such a special place. I'm going to try and show you some of the other rooms without disturbing people. I think down here there was a little private tea room. Yep, people are inside there. You can see, pretty special. And then back down here into the hall. So we'll just go through here. Look at this dining room, beautiful decorations. I love the wreaths. And look at these crowns on each of the table settings. Those wreaths are actually real. Incredible. I'm gonna just show you outside into the garden. It's looking a little bit disheveled because of the marquees, but it is a gorgeous place.
there's a lot to see. <laughs> It'd be perfect if there was no one here and I could just show you all the details. But I think this is pretty fun. And you're getting a good glimpse of everything. So I just wanted to show you this hallway because they have this gallery wall. And on the back wall in my living room, I'm thinking about doing something like this. I saw a picture in House and Garden magazine a few months ago. And I thought that it'd be a great solution for my wall. Just finding architectural prints in black and white and finding some really chic, simple frames. Just putting them all on the walls. This is great inspiration for that. Well, first of all, let me just apologise for my slightly casual, dishevelled appearance. I'm not glam ready like I usually am for the camera, but it's been a bit of a miserable day here in Edinburgh. It's completely dark. You can see I've got all the lamps on, and so I haven't really felt like getting all dressed up. And I've had a cosy day doing work from home here at my desk. But I've come up with an idea for the sideboard so I was debating whether or not to paint it. I did ask all of you what you thought and most of you said not to paint it and I think I agree. But what I am going to do with it, I'm going to paint the very top and I'm going to do it in a marble effect so that it looks like real marble, like it's got a real marble top. I think that piece is beautiful but it just needs zhuzhing up and making a little bit more glamorous. I think it will really improve the piece. So I found this incredible video on YouTube um, of an expert painter who goes through a step-by-step -step process and it looks magnificent at the end result. So even though I've never done this before, because of this excellent video, which I'm going to link in the description for you, I'm really confident that I can give it a good go and hopefully it will turn out well. And if it doesn't, then there must be a way to fix it. So I'm going to paint the top of the sideboard and then rearrange a few things. I've got some ideas for what I want to do with that little corner there. I'm thinking of bringing the oil painting of the Cotswolds back into this room. Uh, even though I really love it in the bedroom above the bed, I'm kind of feeling like I don't see it very much. I walk in there at night to go to bed and then I'm sleeping, so I only I'm get sorry, to see. The battery died on the camera, so that just cut me off there. But I was saying that the oil painting above the bed I feel like I only get to see it really when I go to bed at night. So I'm not getting the full joy from the painting. When it was in this room, I used to see it every single day, even if it was subconsciously. It was there, looking beautiful. So the way that I look at this room, we have the new Jonathan Fremantle painting with the green man. We have these maps, which only can go on this wall. The wall there with the, with the table, and the lamp, I don't think a picture would work there because it would be too crowded. So I think the perfect place for the Cotswold painting to go would be on the back wall over the new sideboard with its new marble top and two tall standing lamps. I think it will really do it justice. That's a beautiful space for it to go. It's going to be away from direct sunlight to stop it from fading and I'll get to see it every day. And I just think then that it will really bring this room together. Painting is going to go above there with a newly painted marble top and I think it will add some grandeur to the room. So I'm going to try that out and I think it will go well. I've just got a good feeling. Fingers crossed. So I'm beginning, as I always do, by preparing the piece of wood. I use methylated spirits just to take a, away any uh, grime and dirt and just to prepare the surface so that it can really grip the paint. Now I'm just applying the chalk paint over the piece of wood. The great thing about this dark mahogany is that it really grips the paint very well so you don't need to do any prep work and it just goes on really, really nicely. It needed two coats, so here I am just applying the second coat before I move on to the next step in the process. Now this is lightly sanding down the piece with a very, very light touch. I'm just skimming over 
just to remove any of the grain and any of the paint strokes so that we get a really smooth finish. And then I'm going to wax the top of this. This is because uh, wax repels water and we need to add a lot of water in the next step to add our marble grain. So finally I'm just giving it a good old shine with the wax and buffing it up ready for the next process. The final step in this process is adding a very thin layer of paint. I've actually wet my brush and then dipped it into the paint and this provides a really beautiful last even layer that almost looks like marble itself as you can see. It's really gorgeous and smooth. Now for the fun part, so I've mixed up some grey paint with water and we're going to use this to create our veins. So I'm just using my atomizer to spray the entire piece, really activate the paint and make sure that it's not going to stick too much. And then I'm taking the cloth and just removing any excess water. Now with my hand moving very freely, I'm just creating a very uneven line, a very wavy line. And this will be our grain and I'm taking a lint-free cloth, dabbing it and this will just create tiny little veins to give our marble effect. At first it doesn't really look like it's working but I promise it will. You then take a brush, a dry brush and dab the paint in and this creates a very deep shadow that would eventually look like marble. And I'm just going to repeat this process over the entire piece, moving the brush over, twirling my hand, and you will find that at the end you get a beautiful marble finish. Here is the end result. I'm so pleased with it. I think it looks exactly like marble. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see how I style up this sideboard and create my home bar. So I think it was in my last video, wasn't it, when I went to the store to look at all of the Christmas decorations and I asked you whether you thought I should put up my Christmas tree or not because I was thinking that maybe I shouldn't this year. The reason being is that for the latter part of December, so from about the 20th, I'm going to be going down to Staffordshire to stay with my family and I probably won't be back until the new year. So it seems like, because I'm not going to be here for Christmas itself, it's quite a big effort to put up the tree that maybe I should not bother. But I have to say that I have listened to everybody's comments and there were quite a few. I've been walking around town, seeing all of the decorations and I just opened my storage cupboard the other day and the Balsam Hill Christmas tree was sitting in the box and I've suddenly been overwhelmed with a feeling of Christmas. So it is the 21st of November today and I have decided that I'm going to put up my Christmas tree and I'm excited about doing it. This will be, I think, my fourth year of sharing decorating my tree on YouTube. Let me just think, so I did that one. Yeah, this is gonna be my fourth tree that I've put up on YouTube, sharing it with you all. And I've kind of, I'd kind of forgotten how special it is to me to be able to do that. So I am very happy to say that I'm gonna be putting up the tree today. You can join me in doing so. Uh, you may remember last year that I purchased a Balsam Hill Christmas tree. I usually have a real one and I have to say that I found this to be a lot easier, a lot more convenient, quicker and a lot less mess. So when it came to take down the tree in the new year, early this year, I just pulled all the decorations off, 
put the tree together and put it away in its box. Usually it would take me a few days to take the decorations down, try and get the tree up the stairs out my house, get rid of it somehow. Uh, in fact, the council usually come and collect the trees, but it's a very big deal for me to run down the street, pulling this huge tree on my own. So, and then there is also the cleaning. So getting all of the pine needles up with my vacuum cleaner is a real pain. So I have to say that even though I do really love the look, feel and scent of a real Christmas tree, at the end of the day, it's just a lot more easier to use a faux tree. So I'm going to be using my Balsam Hill faux tree again. This year I am being very strict and I am definitely not using any red in my Christmas decorations. I'm eliminating red. Now, last year I said the same, but then when I put all the decorations on, I felt like something was missing. If that's the case again this year, then I'll go out and buy something else to fill it up. But I'm definitely not having red on my tree this year. It's not that I don't like red, I think it looks incredible, but it sounds ridiculous, but as a content creator, someone who has to post on Instagram and things like that, red just does not fit with my scheme or lifestyle. So red is not coming into the picture this year. It's going to be gold, white, creams, greens. That's the theme. So no red. Hold me to that. I do not want to put any red on the tree. So I'm really excited to get this done. It is one o'clock on Tuesday, the 21st of November. Hopefully we'll get this done today. It's already getting dark in Edinburgh, but I'm used to that now. So I'll just continue on and get it, get it done. So let's do it. So to begin, I'm just gonna move everything away from this corner where the tree's gonna go. The sideboard I'm placing behind the sofa and the tree will go there in that corner. The great thing about Balsam Hill trees is that they just slot into each base and the lights just come on automatically. You don't have to do anything else, which makes life a lot more easy. Please excuse this embarrassing moment. I was listening to some Christmas carols whilst decorating the tree. I wish I could include the sound, but I think that YouTube would block it for copyright reasons, so you'll have to guess what I was listening to. So I remember that I have my Balsam Hill gloves. You get these when you buy a tree and they're great for sprucing up the tree, otherwise your hands would be pretty scratched. So what I'm doing is I'm just going through every single branch, pulling each branch in and out, up and down, all around, to make sure that it looks as real and full as possible. I'm just inserting section two and I will do exactly the same thing. I'm going to spend quite a long time doing this because I want it to look as best as it can. And I think that it's best to really invest your time doing this part so that you've got a beautiful tree in the end. It takes a bit of time, but it is definitely worth it. So, that's the tree all assembled. All of the lights are working. And I have to say that I'm thinking it looks quite nice the way it is and it's very tempting just to not decorate it. And I have seen people do that quite recently. They're just putting a tree with lights on, which is quite chic. But I am going to decorate it, don't worry. But I just think it looks quite nice like that. Now, what I said at the beginning, when I said about having a faux tree, it's a lot easier because you don't have to put all the lights on. What I forgot about was that you have to spend that amount of time fluffing up the branches. So in reality, there's no quick and easy way to put up a Christmas tree. You really just have to embrace it as a task that's going to take probably most of the day and just enjoy the slowness of it. Now, I am going to tell you something about my life that I've never talked about before, but I've never talked about this year. So, sorry, I was talking and then the microphone ran out of battery. 
So what I wanted to say was that I have something that I would like to share with you that I haven't spoken about all year. Not for any particular reason, just because uh, I just thought that it was a private thing and I also didn't want to kind of jinx things. So at the beginning of the year, in January, the very beginning of January, I actually met someone and we have been together since then, so since January, and we have had a lovely time. We, we, we started our relationship slow and took it all very nice and steadily and it, it ended up, up being a really great relationship. The only thing is, is that he lives in another country. So I have travelled to him quite a lot. By the way, when we met, he wasn't living in another country, he was living here. But in the middle of the year, he moved away. So I have been travelling to see him. And the reason why I'm bringing up this story is because one of the reasons, well, one of the things that I often thought about when I thought about being in a relationship was special occasions like Christmas time and how much they're improved when you're in a loving relationship. And I always enjoyed with my previous boyfriends Christmas very much because it was a time where you really could embrace each other and enjoy doing things together. I'm all about, as you probably know, the small things. I like to go to a Christmas market and have a hot chocolate and see the lights and then go and buy a real tree and bring it back and decorate it together. So when I was hoping for a relationship for the last two years, that's one of the things I was excited about. And it just so happens that this year I have met somebody who's amazing, but we're not able to do that together this year. I'm not moaning about it, I just wanted to share. Uh, and I think that is one of the reasons why I was a bit reluctant to put up the tree this year, because I just felt like it wasn't gonna be that special thing that I've been hoping for. But actually, it still is that special thing. And I just wanted to tell you that you can be on your own and still enjoy doing wonderful things like putting up your tree. Just take the time to really focus in on what you're doing, appreciate the moment, what it means, and it is a magical thing to do. So I just thought that I would share that little bit of information about me. Um, he is coming home for Christmas, but not until like the 16th. So it'd be nice to see each other and be reunited for our first Christmas together. In fact, we're going to be spending it apart because we're both going to our separate families, but we'll still get to spend some time together in December, which will be wonderful. So yeah, that's my little bit of sharing. We need to get on with decorating the rest of the tree. Now, I think I always get excited at this point because you've got through all the fluffing of the tree and that's the worst part. And then it's the exciting bit where you get to put the decorations on. But after a few minutes, I kind of get a little bit overwhelmed. I keep stepping back and seeing, have I put this in the right place? Does it look okay? It's like having writer's block almost. So you just have to keep going and just keep putting them on. I'm rambling now, I don't know what I'm saying. Maybe it's because I've just shared some information, I'm a bit flustered, but yeah, I'm gonna decorate the rest of the tree. I decided that I, well, I didn't decide, I ran out of decorations. So because I've eliminated all of the red, all that you can see on the tree is what we have, and then there are only these left. So I thought, oh, I need to go and buy something else. So I've just been to the shop, and I want to have, I wanted to have like greens and gold. So I've just got these little green ones, some more gold, and some lighter sagey green ones. Now these were all quite inexpensive. So these, this is the only store that was open because it's getting quite late. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up the tree with those ones. And then tomorrow I'm gonna go to somewhere like John Lewis and buy maybe five or 10 really nice decorations, special ones. 
And then I also want to get some green sage colored ribbon, probably in a velvet and I will tie them into bows and I want, I just want to put them all over the tree hanging because I think you need to have that kind of element. It used to be tinsel. I know it's gone out of fashion now. Um, so it's either got to be something to loop through the tree, like a ribbon or ribbons all over. I think I would like to try the ribbon thing. So these were very inexpensive. Like this was, oh, this, this was 10 pounds for all of those. So I'm just gonna bulk up the rest of the tree just to fill it out. And then tomorrow I'm, th I'm gonna go to bed, have a rest, and then tomorrow I'm gonna finish off and make it look gorgeous, fingers crossed. This is day two of decorating the tree. I'm actually thinking that it looks pretty nice. I'm not gonna go too much further or spend any more money now. I've just been to John Lewis and I bought some little star decorations that I'm just gonna show you. Those, which I think are gorgeous. So I'm just gonna add those on. I haven't bought many, only three. Because, yeah, I don't really want to spend a huge amount of money on this tree. Uh, it's just for a few weeks, that's what you have to remember, even though it's very tempting. So what my idea was is to kind of look for big gaps. Like here, there is one. And that can just sit there, like that, and kind of rest. Can you see that? Let me just show you. Now I have this ribbon and I'm just going to cut it into lengths like I have done here and just see about draping it over bits of the tree just to see what that looks like. It might not look very good but we'll see. Okay, I really do feel like getting very close to being finished. The last thing that I'm going to try, I have this gorgeous green ribbon. And if you see when I hold it up to the tree, it just provides that glamour and elegance. So I'm just thinking that I'm going to weave this through the branches from top to bottom I'll probably destroy the whole tree, but I think that will add a great finish to the tree and just finish it off really well. So let's try and see what happens. If it doesn't work, we can just remove it. Okay, I've decided to, against the ribbon I think, it looks alright, but there's not enough to get to the bottom of the tree, so it kind of looks a bit weird when you stand back. And you've got that shot of green through the top of the middle, and then it kind of just ends. So I think I'm just going to remove that. And what I might do instead is make larger ribbons and just see if they fit on. 
but we'll see. I might think of something else to do with it. Well, that is the tree all done. I've just added in some wrapped gifts at the bottom just to cover the base. Now, if anyone is thinking of watching this video and robbing my house, these are just empty boxes. But I am very, very happy with the way this has turned out. I love all of these gold and greens. I think the little ribbons really add a great finish. And yeah, I'm just really, really happy with it. It's one of the best trees I think I've done for years. So yes, I'm very, very happy with the way that the tree has turned out. Uh, I think it is one of the best that I've done for quite some time. I think it's just the eliminating the red. And not that I hate red, as I mentioned before, but it just, this room is quite soothing and calm and the green and gold just, I think, works really, really well. So yes, there's still a lot more to do in terms of Christmas. I'm going to be making a garland for the fireplace. I want to find some real foliage for that and I want to make something quite special. I want to go a little bit extra this year with that. And then I'll make a wreath for the door and we've also got the dining table to do as well. So definitely not complete, but a great little taster for Christmas and just to get us all in the mood, the tree is all ready. So, the marble top, the marble top is finished on here and I have to say, I'm very, very happy with it. I think it looks super incredible and absolutely like marble. And I have to tell you, if you're thinking of doing this, just go for it because I am not in any way an incredible artistic painter. I'm very, I don't have any experience really, but this was so easy I'm convinced that anybody could do it if you just follow the steps. And I just think that this has transformed this very plain sideboard into something a little bit more elegant and beautiful. Now, as you can see, I've added the Cotswold painting above here, and I think it's the perfect place. This is the perfect wall for it. It just transforms this whole corner that was looking quite plain before. What I'm going to do now is, like I mentioned, I've got a silver tray. I'm going to put my spirits and alcohol here. And I've got two candlesticks that are quite elegant that I had hidden away in a drawer that I haven't used for a long time. And I'm going to make this a little elegant bar. And then next week, I'm going to line the insides of these cupboards with, inside there are drawers, and I'm going to line them with probably some velvet and then put all the glassware in there. And then in these drawers, things like cocktail napkins. So we've got a new piece of furniture that I'm absolutely happy with. Marble top, I think it looks great, but I'd love to know what you think. Let me know. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you have enjoyed this episode and spelt the Christmas spirit a little bit. I look forward to seeing you next time, but until then, take care. Bye-bye.